Hi everybody, it's Sunday. That means I get to answer your questions. Heck, I'm even happy that I have questions. I actually did this expecting to get nothing. But just to say that I did and just go, eh, yeah, you know, I got nothing as usual. But I got questions and I'm looking forward to answering them and being sassy. So let's get to the first question. This is from DS Master 10. Here's a two part question. Oh boy. Uh, first part. What made you want to do audio dramas in the first place? Um, the simple answer is that it's... It's easy. It, I mean, it's not easy easy. I mean, in basic terms, take a bunch of clips, slap them together, you got a decent audio, but if you factor in microphone issues and sound quality, and if you want to add music and all that stuff, it becomes a little harder, but it's still the easiest format to work with. A lot of people, you know, you hear a lot of actors say that dubbing is the hardest format that they do. It goes the same for editors. Dubbing is hard to get everything timed in. And I, I had just come out of doing The Legend of Zelda Return, which was an audio book. I mean, we didn't have music or anything like that, so it was a, it was a full audio book. And I wanted to do something, something like that. And especially since I was running low on work, I wanted to do more, and I kind of filled up my quota on Legend of Zelda The Return. So I decided to take some of my own work and do audio dramas of it. I mean, it seemed easy enough, may as well do it. And it was kind of easy, but as the series went along, I started paying more attention to it, and the finer tuned things, such as audio quality, and music sound, and all that stuff. So the basic answer is that it's an easy format to work with. Part two of the question, what are the challenges you face to this day in terms of making the dramas? <laughs> okay, easiest answer right about that, uh, tardiness. Tardiness is the killer of everything that you work with. Because you are relying on individuals to take their time and record for you. About an average day, maybe half get it in on time. There have been a lot of days where some people who have worked with for over a year go weeks beyond the due date. In fact, part of a huge reason Ghost Rider is now on a hiatus is because there are two people who, despite multiple weeks past their due date, and promises that they'll get something in, haven't done it, no matter how many times I've reminded them. So, tardiness is the killer of any audio drama. And you have to kind of decide by them whether if you want to go on without them, or wait for them even longer. So, tardiness is definitely the killer. I would say the second hardest challenge would definitely be have to do with microphone quality with all the other actors. If the, uh, an actor has a lesser microphone quality, it's a bit hard to work it into everyone else who has a better microphone quality, especially if some other person is used to doing effects like compressor, which can amplify your voice, and somebody who records on a like little Logitech stand microphone. That's a real challenge to get that voice to not sound dwarfed by the other voice. And that's a challenge I mostly faced in Ghost Rider. I don't really have that issue with Sonic's The Hedgehog's Secret Identity or any of the other upcoming projects that I have. Alright, second question. Uh, this was a Skype question from Nick Smithberger, who you might recognize for doing this. Because that would defeat the purpose. What? To test your ability to fuck people up! <laughs> you ass white! <laughs> I'm just like... Yeah. Him. But he didn't have a question, so... And his question is... What new shows will you be directing? I, I said multiple times that I'm working on stuff that I can't really talk about. Uh, out of the three things that I'm working on... I can, I can confirm my involvement with part of my involvement with one, and I can actually now confirm my involvement with the other, but I, I can't talk about the third one. So uh, let's talk about the ones that I can. The one that I can kind of talk about, uh, which I re revealed on the uh, Black Scepter Productions Facebook page, if nobody has been there, but what I revealed is that I've been recently attached on to an Attack on Titan uh, comic, drama, I, I, I can't remember what they classified it, called Attack on Dragon. 
and that's unusual, a little unusual for me because I have not seen Attack on Titan yet. I've been kind of avoiding it because of all the hype. They're like, oh no, it's worth it, get into the hype, man. I'm like, that's what everybody says when something is hyped, and usually it disappoints. Everyone said the same thing about Sword Art Online, and I, it was good, but it definitely wasn't as great as everyone was making it out to be. So, I, I've been waiting to see Attack on Titan. I'm gonna see it, but I just haven't seen it yet. So, but I, I, got, I got kind of attached onto the Attack on Dragon thing because uh, the, the creator does this kind of Tolkien kind of myth to it, and I like... Lord of the Rings, I just got out playing uh, Shadow of Mordor, which is my second favorite game of 2014. So I was... I, I didn't audition for it. I, the, the director actually messaged me uh, saying that he liked Ghost Rider, or he liked watching Ghost Rider, and he wanted to express a letter of, uh, of compliment of my series. And I said thanks, and so I... I decided to check it out. I mean, I wasn't a big Attack on Titan fan, but give it a whirl. And I like what they presented. They presented something that a lot, I've seen a lot of people try but never seem to do. So I got a little interested in it. Even though I didn't really know a lot about Attack on Titan, I could get into the, the dragons and medieval kind of flair about it. So I gave a message like, hey, you know, you guys ever need a little voice every now and then? I can, I can do it. And they said, can you? And I've been brought in. Now, there's another half that I'm involved with, but I cannot tell you about it. That's just something you're going to have to wait. But I can say that I am doing some voice work for the Stack on Dragon, and I will put it up on the Facebook page when I do that work and when it comes out. The other thing that I can now talk about is the project that I said that I was directing for somebody else. We had just finished casting. We are now recording the first episode. It is called... Otherborn. And I am no other way better to explain this than the word crossover. It was a roleplay forum site that someone wanted to adapt into a series. That's a bit of a hard thing to do because you're taking uh, a bunch of people's mixed ideas in a setting that may not always work for a story and then try to create a series out of it. So that's why I have a hard time saying I have no other uh, I guess we can get this is, uh, uh, the, the people who watch Ghost Rider, it's a lot like Ghost Rider. It's, it's a supernatural kind of drama about got kids with powers and they fight demons and it's just like a crossover of characters from different sources material. Uh, I, I'm not going to really go into a lot of them, but I will say a majority of them are all Square Enix and one or two anime characters. Uh, again, if, if that... It sounds like a turnoff, but I, you could just, I'd say just watch it when it comes out and see if you like it or not, because I really can't explain it any effectively. But I am directing that, so you're going to see my, people who watch my project and see my flair or style are going to see that in other points. And I might be doing some writing for it, might. I, I kind of made it clear that I don't really want to take an active part in writing that series. So, there's someone else heading the series, and I just kind of come in from time to time and write things in. So that's what I can talk about, and that's what I'm working on so far. I will have updates on those when those come out, of course, but if you really want to see updates, though, you're going to have to go to the Black Scepter Facebook page, because it's a little hard to get active updates on my YouTube one. But since the, the two that I mentioned are not, definitely not going to be on my channel, they're not going to be on my channel, they're going to be on someone else's channel, so. Or you can just search it. But that's it. But that's what I'm working on right now, and this is what I'm going to be going forward in in 2015. Okay, uh, our third question is from Wooten A.E. Oh boy. Oh, first question. Uh, he did two questions. First question. When is the next episode of Blank going to be out? I'm glad you asked, because the next episode of Blank is going to have something perfect. I'm going to do this for everything. I'm going to suggest it's going to be 100% wooten -less. That's right, I'm making all my projects wooten Because I look at some of the projects that this that ever has a Wooten in it, and it doesn't seem to do very popular. But take away the Wooten, and all of a sudden I get a lot more attention. So and I'm gonna encourage a lot of future directors to do all their projects 100 percent wooten -less. Hashtag it, spread it around. Oh, yeah, the actual question. 
actual real question. What is your recording setup? Or nothing tell all. Well, I'm not gonna tell all, but I can give you a little look. So some of you might have seen my equipment in some of the other videos just kind of standing in the corner, but this is a much better look at it now. Uh, what I'm using right now is a Sterling audio microphone, and this is this is not a USB mic. This is a this is an actual musician's mic, so it needs a little. I'll get to that in a moment, but it needs a little something here. But I'm gonna show you the, the actual microphone. I bought a, I got this off a of deal, so it comes with two. So I'll step back a little item. So these are the two microphones. This is a this is a handheld one, but this is the one I mostly use. And I would attach it to a stand I have right behind me here, which I'm using for this. And I would attach some cables and connect it to the to the audio interface, which I'm going to show you in a moment. The my other piece of equipment behind here. This is my my sound popper. I'm gonna upgrade this to a metal one with holes in the middle, but. This is a really good one too. It, it works just as well, but it's just kind of like a really firm, glorified pantyhose deal. So, and uh, the next bit is this. This is an Alcius IO2 Express audio interface. Uh, it comes with two, which I didn't really need, but it was cheaper than all the single ones. So, so the cable goes in here. And the cable can go in here if I have a second. A USB cable will go in the back here and will connect to my computer. And this connects from the microphone to the computer and, and just allows it to, for the computer to pick it up. And it's got its own individual switches. This is a gain control. Uh, this is for headphones, which I don't headphones, which I don't really use. Mono or stereo. This is this is what it needs. A yeah, 48V or a Phantom drive. This is what allows the mic to be powered up and connect to the computer. That, that would have to be on, and this is why a little light will come out here. Now, the great thing about this is I got to test drive this equipment for about two weeks. Uh, a friend of mine lent me his uh, microphones. Uh, I, I bought this. I bought this during it, but I got to work with it hands-on and kind of just figure it out as I go. And that's what I've been using in a lot of my projects now. So whenever you guys hear me, it's I'm using this and the Sterling microphone, which you just saw a moment ago. So that's my equipment. And the other thing, I have a stand, which this needs to go on a stand. So that's what I'm using, but you don't want to see that. Uh, there are two pieces of equipment that I am still looking for. As a new sound popper would be nice, and I'm gonna get something called a shock mount, which will go around the microphone, kind of owl protection to it, and help clean up the quality a little better. But yeah, that's what I'm using. 